Lakers beat writer for the L.A. Times, kind enough to join us from Dallas. Tanya, how is morale around the Lakers? It was pretty good yesterday. We were in practice. They were doing their half-court shot competition that they do sometimes at the end of practice. Um, you know, Luke Walton's such a positive guy that he, he keeps things pretty positive with the team. So around the team, the players and the coaches, things were pretty positive yesterday. All right, let's say I've been out of the country the last month, and I come back in and I say, Tanya, give me the Cliff Notes version. What's happened with my Lakers? How would you sum that up? Well, uh, there, were, there, was, there were two incidents that okay. people could call coups, potential coups. <laughs> um, <laughs> You know, first, Jeannie Buss removed her brother and Mitch Kupchak as the general manager and brought in Magic Johnson. And then her brothers, her older brothers, Johnny and Jim, tried to take the team back from her. Mm, mm. And uh, she didn't let them. <laughs> that is the Cliff Notes version. <laughs> okay, but how does this affect the team? If I'm a Laker fan, okay, there's turmoil in the front office here, but... Is that going to impact this team? How does it impact this team as they move forward? Well, the way it impacts the team is that this organization was so stable for so long with Jerry Buss running things. Um, you know, things were, things were in a – not a lot changed up at the top. And Jerry Buss's trust wanted in, – in his trust, he said that he wanted Jeannie Buss to be running the team, you know, after his death. And – things have just kind of become very unsettled there. Now, I don't think that legally, I don't think her brothers have any leg to stand on right now. So um, this, is, this is kind of messy, and there's a lot of family drama playing out. You know, she wrote this letter in the court filings that called her brother Jim unfit to run the Lakers, mm. and there's a lot of that kind of drama going on. But I think once they get, get into court and resolve this, um, she's going to be in charge, and moving forward, she's going to be making the decisions about the team, and things will return to some stability, it seems like. Magic Johnson's role is going to be, how would you define that? Well, he's the president of basketball operations, which means that everything stops with him. You know, he's, he's the final, he has the final say on the draft. He has the final say on free agency. Um, they're bringing in general manager Rob Palinka, uh, who is, I think, right, right now he's working to – uh, divest from his agent business and um, once he comes in he's going to be doing a lot of the day-to-day -day, a lot of the the kind of dealings with other general managers and things like that but the final say on what players come to the Lakers what decisions they make basketball wise that's all going to be with Magic Johnson. Could you see a scenario where Phil Jackson comes back here Tanya? I can't I think that if that were going to happen um, I mean I, th I think that his breakup with Jeannie Buss that told us that that's not going to happen okay. because the distance, I think, was a big part of that. And if he was going to be coming back to the Lakers anytime soon or, you know, anytime at all, I don't think – I think they would have been looking to that as something that would change the distance. If but, they were still together, do you think that's a possibility? I, yeah. I mean, I, I think that if they were, if they were still together – uh, I mean, I think they would have stayed together if that were a possibility, if that answers your question. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and uh, with Luke Walton, um, he's he, he, uh, how would you grade what he's accomplished so far here in his rookie season? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, he's done, he's done what he's set out to do. I mean, he's had a lot of handicaps, and it's been a very frustrating season for him because they, he's – not used to losing if you look at all the teams that he played on very rarely did he, was he on a team that was out of the playoff hunt with 30 games to go um but you know he's kept things very positive the players still really believe in him in a way that um towards the end they didn't really connect with byron scott in, in a similar way um because he was he, he didn't have sort of the positive uh, tone that Luke Walton has. Well, Byron um, didn't like young players, so that certainly didn't bode well for Byron when you have a full team of young players. He was hard on them. Yeah. And that was definitely difficult for some of the young players. And, and Walton has a really good sense of, he can read a room really well, so he knows what these guys need and responds to that. You did a profile on, uh, on Luke Walton uh, recently in the LA Times? Uh, I have... 
Uh, not really. <laughs> well, did you do something on uh, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson? I did, yes. Okay, it, it was really well done, and I, and, and that's where I, I, I saw your name, and, and I thought, you know, I'd love to have you on to talk about the Lakers. Does Luke Walton still think Larry Bird is better than Magic Johnson? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but but he was around Bird since he was, what, five years old, I think? Yeah, yeah. When, his dad, when his dad went to go play for the Celtics um, in the 80s. <laughs> he that's when he met Larry Bird and he's just it's it was funny I actually was I had the interview scheduled with Larry Bird right around when Lakers shoot around was opening up for availability and I asked the Lakers PR staff can I can Luke wait is like if he can't it's fine but if he can that would be great because I have to go talk to Larry Bird and I was told he said only for Larry <laughs> <laughs> It was well done. I, I really enjoyed the story and had forgotten all about that, that here's Luke growing up and his dad's a Celtic and Larry Bird is there visiting and he falls in love with Larry Bird and would, would have those arguments with all of his friends in San Diego that Larry was better than Magic Johnson. So uh, have fun. Good luck with uh, the beat there, Tanya. And thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. All right. Tanya Ganguly, who uh, covers the Lakers for the LA Times. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.